Good morning, everyone. This is Financial Literacy 101. Happy Monday to everyone out there. It's time to get into it. It's time to make that money. It's time to invest some of that money so you guys do a lot better than what you guys have been doing before. And investment is one of those things that you have to consistently do, right? It's like getting up, taking a shower before you go to work. This, this is one of the things you have to must do each and every day, whether it be in the traditional stock market or in the cryptocurrency, either with Bitcoin or the alternative coins, also known as altcoins. But today we're going to talk about electric vehicles. I think, well, it's not even that I think. We know that electric vehicles is now the present and the future and how the industry and the infrastructure of America is moving towards heavily towards electric vehicles. And I, I believe that we should get in on it before these things absolutely explode. <laughs> Okay, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So first and foremost, we're going to go over Rivian. Rivian has been doing a lot of good things now. First and foremost, uh, we understand that Ford backed out of the deal with Rivian, but this as a spoiler alert, Amazon is still in the deal at a very high percentage. Now, they came out with their IPO November 10th of this particular year. We know this. And it came out at $78 per share. Now it's up to $121 per share. Now, just like any IPO, we understand that it started to increase. It started to rocket. And then it got up to $172. And then just like any other IPO, it starts to cool off. Now, um, probably in December, we'll start seeing some, um, some averages come out where Rivian started to get around the 130 to 140 mark. So if you didn't invest in on the IPO, you lost out on a tremendous amount of money. Now, I remember giving some stock advice about Snapchat. Snapchat came out, I think it was anywhere between $15 to $20 per share. And now Snapchat, um, I, I mean, it's bolstering, it's, it's rocketing across any mo any you know margin profits that I can even think of at the time. I'm kind of choked up because I didn't get in on Rivian, and I knew Rivian would be revolutionary when it comes to electric vehicles. Um, I'm beating myself up just a little bit. I, I should have got in on this. I should have bought some options. I should have done something when it comes to Rivian. So Rivian right now is $121 per share over at 56% in the past week. Rivian has been down. Okay. But it hasn't been down in a way that I believe that I should still get in because it jumped up on November 16th to $177 per share. Now you guys are not familiar with Rivian. Rivian is that new electric vehicle car company that deals with uh, the electric pickup truck as well as an SUV. I think they're soon going to be coming out with um, with a sedan, okay? So let me show you how some of these Rivians look very quickly. This is the Rivian.com website. And the starting price for the electric pickup, which they call the adventurer in some sorts of a matter, starts off at $67,500, okay? And, of course, their R1S is $70,000. Now, a lot of people have been keeping their eye on the Rivian R1T, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and play around a little bit here. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to understand the different levels of investment, you have to understand the products in which you are investing in. See right here, they have the Adventure Packer to your far right here starting at $73,000. And that's what a lot of people have been looking at. They also have the large pack when it comes to the miles of ETA of 314 miles the different colors, just like any other car company, okay? So you can go in here and order your Rivian, your pickup truck. And ladies and gentlemen, the pickup truck I used to have was a Dodge Ram, okay? Dodge Ram Bighorn Edition. And I got 14 ga 14 miles to the gallon. And this was in, uh, I think it was 2009 my vehicle was. I love the truck, but I couldn't handle the gas, right? And could I afford the gas? Yes, but electric vehicles are the way of the, are the, way of the world because we understand that fossil fuels will essentially run out. Fossil fuels will essentially run out. So that's why these people are getting ahead of the um, of the curve when it comes to fossil fuels because you see gas prices are absolutely astronomical at this time. Someone told me that in California, the gas price is at $6. I know here in uh, Texas, it's around $3 and some change, $3.29. So at one gas station in Texas, $3.79. And, and believe me, that's very, very expensive for Texas, okay? And a lot of people are driving around here with cars that just take premium. So we can only imagine the amount of money that they're spending. Okay. Let me show you a little bit more information when it comes to your investments here. It says that Rivian has a market cap of around 114 billion as November 18th, my birthday. 
dropping a square there. After slumping the last two days, and it says Tesla, which we will cover, Tesla has a 1.1 trillion evaluation. You see that? A 1.1 trillion valuation. It says Tesla stock price has exploded over the last several weeks before pulling back. As CEO Elon Musk has begun selling a 10% stake in the company, but Elon still has a 20% stake, which he's still the majority owner in Tesla. Okay. We understand that Ford with their F 150 Lightning, they back out of the deal with Rivian. But listen to this, ladies and gentlemen Amazon reveals a 20% stake in Rivian. That's right, Amazon. I keep telling people Amazon is in everything. If you're not investing in Amazon, you are the investing fool because even if it's $20 a month, $10 a month, you can still make good money off of Amazon. And it says that Ford back Rivian F1 T beat Tesla and General Motors Auto to the punch. Okay. The plant has a production capacity of 150 units. That's talking about the Rivian factory. So again, I'm just trying to give you the information and the foreknowledge of electric vehicles is not just the future. It's the present because people are driving around in them. And Second on the list is Tesla. We understand Tesla is doing tremendously well. They're up 134% for this year. Past three months, Tesla's been up 71% past month, 35% past week, around 15%. And then today in the pre-market, they're roughly up around 6%, okay? And here's my uh, stake in Tesla. I only have five shares, but off that five shares, I'm up 159%. At $3,800. And I tell people, I, I know people love the dollar amount, but the money is in the percentage, right? Anytime that you're getting over 20% in your investment, that's really, really good. And when you start getting over 100%, that's astronomically great, okay? Because for every dollar you're investing, you're getting a dollar plus the extra percentage. So right here on my investment, I'm getting a dollar and 60. So I only invest in a dollar, but I'm returning back with $2.60 essentially, right? but $1.60 on my investment. So that's important, okay? Very, very important. Now, here's just some information you guys might not be aware of when it comes to Tesla. And I'm just gonna show you this very quickly. If you guys are not familiar, they updated their Model S. They came out with a 1,020 um, horsepower plant performance model for the 22, uh, for, for 2022, and also long, longer ranges when it comes to this. So if you're looking at your far right, you see the range goes from 396 miles to 405 miles on battery only. But everyone knows that Tesla are very expensive and they're around $95,000 at a base model, the MSRP, okay? The horsepower here is from six, um, 670 horsepower to 1,020. And we don't need to get into any more than that, but it says city, 124 miles per charge or something like that, 115 on a highway. So they're doing very, very well when it comes to technology and Tesla. Also, here's a here's a big ticker here. All new Tesla cars have the hardware needed. Listen to this. All new Tesla cars have the hardware needed in the future for full self-driving in almost all circumstances. The system is designed to be able to conduct short drives as well as long drives. Why is that important? That means that you can own, let's say, for instance, you buy a Tesla at $35,000 and they say, hey, to unlock the full uh, autonomous driving feature, it just costs you $3,500. More times than that, and, and this will be able to drive safely in the city as well on highways. After you have that vehicle for about a year or two and you see other people just sitting back having sandwiches, reading books, <laughs> it's going to get there. I'm telling you, Jetsons are coming, okay? The Jetsons are coming. But you're going to unlock that feature. So they're already putting the technology in the cars, but it depends on a particular package you have. You might have to pay an upcharge in order to get that feature. But nonetheless, this is the two, uh, the new technology that Tesla is putting in all of their vehicles. And when I mean by new technology, I mean new to all of their vehicles, not just some and some models, okay? The new batteries, okay? We understand that Tesla has been pushing the pendulum on innovation when it comes to battery technology with lithium. They said the new batteries would use a lithium iron phosphate chemistry rather than the nickel cobalt aluminum, which Tesla will continue to use in its longer range vehicles. The move is likely a way, listen to this, is likely a way for Tesla to increase profit margin on its cars. Why not necessarily having to raise prices? That means that they could essentially with this new technology either keep the vehicles at the same price 
or lower the price so they can move more product, so they can push more inventory to the people. That's absolutely great for investors because you want to see people on the road with more Teslas. That, that's when you know that your investment dollars will double and triple and quadruple when you see more Tesla vehicles on the road. And that pretty much goes for any electric car company. Of course, we just cover Rivian. We're about to move on to Apple because we understand Apple is back on it again. First, they're like, oh, we're going to make an Apple car. Then we're not going to make an Apple car. Now we're going to make an Apple car. But anyway, Apple is still a great, a great buy for anyone's portfolio, okay? But last but not least, when it comes to Tesla, they're expecting Tesla to hit around $1,400, okay? They're saying that the median, which they already surpassed because Tesla right now is what, $1,100 per share? They're already past the median. So I'm looking at the new height of $1,400 per share. And for you beginning investors, do not let these prices scare you, okay? With all these new platforms you have, Webull, M1 Finance, even your traditional ones, you can invest in fractions, $10, $15, $20. Don't let nobody who's dropping 10 grand and five grand persuade you or, or, or discourage you from investing. Listen, those little amounts of money that you can put to the side for your investment because you do it with your 401k with your company, then you can do it with your investment as well. It really doesn't take that amount, okay? So moving on to Apple. Let's move on to Apple. Well, we know all you guys love Apple because majority of people I know have either an Apple Watch or an Apple MacBook Air Book, an Apple phone, a 13, whatever, right? But in the last year, Apple's been up 36% in the past three months. Apple's been up around 10% the past month. It's been around 9% the past week, up around 7.5%. And then today, Apple is up around 2%. Here's my stake in Apple. I own no Apple products at all. My wife does, but I don't. I own nothing Apple, but I own the company. I own a share of the company, okay? I own 11.4 shares. Um, right now, my percentage is up around 24.5%, and I've made my total return is $366. But just like everyone knows, I have Apple on a recurring investment as well as I do on Tesla, okay? And another cool thing that we need to point out with Apple is Apple is one of the few companies um, that I've been covering here that has dividends, okay? Apple has dividends at 0.53%. Now, they're measly dividends, but nonetheless, they're dividends. And for you guys who are probably like how Apple cars will look, this is kind of the renders that they're putting out, some of the, the projections of what they think the vehicle may look like. I don't know. The, out of all these vehicles, this one is kind of beefy and beastie. Uh, I don't know. I like this one a lot better. It's sleek, more sporty, you know. And this one right here is look more futuristic. I don't know how you're going to get in it. But again, these are just renders. These are just prototypes that they made. But nonetheless, Apple is talking about their cars again. So let's go over to Apple and, and, and look at some of the products that they have here. Of course, you guys, a lot of you guys might look into the iPhone 13 Pro. And here's the MacBook Pro. You got the App, Apple Watch 7, the Home Mini Pods. I mean, Apple has a slew of products that people absolutely love because of the whole Apple ecosystem. And I get it. I get it. Everything works flawlessly. Hopefully, the people that I love the most, good old Google will get there. They bought Fitbit. I'm waiting for my Pixel watch. <laughs> but nonetheless, let's learn a little bit more about what Apple is doing with these Apple cars. Okay, let's see what these guys are talking about. The, the, the fully self-driving cap capability, why? Why leapfrog the sort of half versions we currently have? Well, that's what Apple does, right? They only enter new product categories when they're able to come out with the lead fair product. Use, fair you use. saw that with the original iPhone. You saw that with the iPad. You saw that with the Apple Watch. Now it's the car's turn, and they want to release something that really no one else has really been successfully able to nail, and that's what they're doing for this. That's how it's been described to me. They really want to create a car that's a hands-free experience. They're redesigning the interior and exterior around the idea of having a car with no wheels or pedals. Okay. As soon as next year, that's fast. That's that. That, that is the regulation there, Mark. Oh, not next year. 20, 2025. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty five is there when is. they want to debut the car uh, as early as. All it's right. Launch. I think I, I think you guys get the picture when it comes to that, right? So Apple is aiming to come out with a fully autonomous car by the year twenty twenty five. But again, investments start today. You don't wait to twenty twenty five or. 2024 when apple was up 500 dollars per share no you no 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 you get into apple right now okay you get into apple right now when it's still under 200 dollars per share that's when you want to get into apple okay 
Now, also, when it comes to Apple, we're looking at the projection. In the next year, they have Apple reaching $200 per share. So it's probably it's probably a good investment that you start investing in Apple when? Today, right now. The market opens in 30 minutes. Let's move on. Neo. Everyone knows one of my favorite stocks here because I made tremendous amount of money off of Neo. But in the last year, Neo has been down 16%. In the past three months, it's been up 10%. Past month, 2%. Past week, down 5.5%. And today is up 4.35%. Now, me personally, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to continue to invest in Neo. I'm not going to stop. Neo is the Tesla of China by far. Okay. Even though there are Teslas, even though there's Tesla in China, Neo is still killing the game. And for you guys who are not familiar with Neo vehicles, here are some of their cars here. Some of the SUVs as well as a car. Here's their sports car right here. And they're 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 highly competitors when it comes to Tesla in the Chinese market. Okay. They are by far the best electric vehicle car company with some of the highest evaluation, one of the large, largest market caps. Now, a lot of people I know have been talking about Xpeng. It's spelled X-P-E-N-G, and the ticker for Xpeng is, uh, I think it's XVAV. My apologies. I forgot the ticker for that one. I think, I think it's X-V-E-X or X-V-E-V, something like that. I'm off a little bit. But nonetheless, NEO is a Tesla of China, and you can get it at a very, very low price point right now. And I think this is a good investment for your electric vehicle car portfolio as well. Okay. And here are the predictions for NEO. Okay. Here's the predictions for NEO. They're expecting NEO to hit at a median at $58. Okay. And then a highest $87 per share. Now, currently, NEO is at 40. So even if it reaches a median target at 58, you're making $18 essentially per share. Now, here's my stake. In Neo, and it's been all over the place essentially. Okay, I'm only at seven percent, only uh, up 189 percent, but I have roughly 70 shares of Neo down from 300 shares because I sold a lot of the shares <clears throat> and made some good money off of that as well. Okay, um, see, so I have a Neo call that's my option trading as well. And I thought I had Neo on a reoccurring investment, maybe I don't, but I have a lot of reoccurring investments. Okay. Let's move on. Last but not least, let's talk about Lucid Motors, also known as the Lucid Group. In the past year, Lucid has been up 444%. Past three months, 143%, so roughly still at 144. The past month, 112%. The past week, 19%. And then today, they're down 4%. Lucid has been doing absolutely tremendous, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, let me show you this very quickly. So they came out last year, September 18, 2020, and they skyrocketed just like any other IPO when they released, and they jumped up to $52.94. They uh, went down to $25 where all of us should have invested, okay? And now they're back up over $50, okay? So look at this again. They came out at $10.25 per share, okay? I'm just, I just want to stay here for a moment for you to think about that because a lot of you guys love those stocks over twenty dollars um excuse me under twenty dollars per share lucid when it first came out last year in september was ten dollars per share and we didn't invest right we didn't invest let me just show this one more time ten dollars and twenty five excuse me ten dollars and twenty five dollars per share ten dollars and twenty five cents per share it jumped up in february of this year to fifty two dollars and ninety four cents it dropped all the way down. Let me get it here to $17.94. So roughly $18. And look where it is now. So there's a lot of money to be made in the stock market when you get in early or you buy in on the dip. So any IPO that you guys are looking to invest in, when most IPOs, the historical and statistical data of IPOs, what happens is if you buy in pre-IPO release, right, before it becomes public, you will make some money. Not more times than that, you'll make some money. Okay. So what occurs is it rockets up and then it drops right back down and then it starts to normalize. But with this one, you see a rare anomaly where it rockets up, drops down, then rockets back up. Okay. I, I don't know what's going on when it comes to this. I can do a little bit more research, right? Um, are there any lucid vehicles on a road right now? <laughs> That's that's the thing. And for you guys who are not familiar with Lucid Motors, um, I'll give you a little bit more information when it comes to this. 
It says that Lucid Group manufactures electric vehicles. It designs, develops, and built energy storage systems for electric vehicles and supplied automakers with the battery pack system needed to power hybrid, plug-in, and electric vehicles. They said the company was founded back in December of 2007 and it's headquartered in Newark, California, okay? So again, let's look at how Lucid looks. Here are some of the vehicles, right? They're very, very beautiful, luxury, luxury, luxury electric vehicles. And the reason why I keep saying luxury, ladies and gentlemen, is because they're in direct competition with Tesla, believe it or not. Because Tesla doesn't really have luxury electric vehicles. They have high functionally, new, innovative, uh, you know, sporty electric vehicles. Lucid Motors wanted to do direct opposite of Tesla, not sporty. They wanted to be sleek and sexy and luxury. Everything does really well-defined lines. And that's what, they, that's what they accomplished here, right? Everything is just smooth and silky. You can just look at the vehicle. And a lot of people are loving Lucid Motors. But I don't know if there are any on the road yet. But people are highly invested in Lucid Motors. So right now, we're looking at Lucid, right? We're looking at Lucy at $52.82 a share, and the projected profit mark is 60 at a high. So that's why this is very interesting because said the median is $57 per share, and the high is 60. What I believe is this will get blown out of the water. I, I think Lucy is going to hit $100 because it's already at um, the top percent of what they are expecting, right? They're expecting an 8.6 profit margin on this at a high rating of $60 per share. I just think it's going to go to 100 unless something like there's a super flaw in their uh, in their, uh, you know, software or they have some flaws in their hardware. When they start actually putting a large number amount of vehicles on the road, that's the only way that I can picture them actually falling short of one hundred dollars, because I, I think right now they're looking at a low. OK, we look down here, a low of sixteen dollars. They're blasting that projection out of the water they're already at 58 dollars per share excuse me 52 dollars per share so they haven't yet reached their median my apologies so the median is 57 so they're five dollars away from their median they're eight dollars away from their high again i just believe that they're going to reach 100 dollars per share okay probably within the next year year and a half or so so um if you guys are not familiar with lucid motors i think you shall and then again there are a lot of ETF, those exchange traded funds that if you want to invest in uh, Tesla and, and Neo and the futuristic Apple car, whenever that's released, right? Apple <laughs> and also also well, Neo and uh, Lucid Motors. And then you also have Workhorse. There's so many electric vehicle car companies out right now. And I have to put these in bundles for you guys to understand that really, if they have solid technology and they're building a network, but when it comes to the evaluation, if you say, Ross, if you had to pick one electric car vehicle that, you know, there's a high probability, there's a high percentage of making some money, I will have to go with Tesla. OK, now, because Tesla is already at over eleven hundred dollars, you will make money. But I can't tell you how to, I can't predict how much you will make, depending on the, the amount of money you invest inside of Tesla. But. Tesla has built is building this network across the United States where you can drive state to state and actually supercharge your car in like 15 to 30 minutes. Now, there's other companies like ChargePoint and Blink Charging that they're also building other networks, but they also want to build them in tandem with Tesla and have all these different uh, extensions or apparatus or adapters to fit different electric vehicles. And that's the problem. See, I believe that all these electric car companies say, hey, we need to make this better for the people. They're not doing that. Where all of their charging mechanisms are the same. The reason why that's hard and the reason the reason why they probably haven't done that yet is because technology, right? Everybody's finding out a new way to charge something, right? Faster, uh, more efficient, right? Y you know, there's phones where you can put your... Um, your uh, uh, earbuds or something, and they charge your earbuds. So they're always coming out with new innovative technology where in fossil fuel, you just put a hole in your car and dump fuel in it. So hopefully they come out with some standardized, which our best bet is that whatever electric vehicle car station, charging station you go to, they have an adapter to fit your vehicle. That's your best bet. Because Tesla's 
far ahead of all these other networks of all these supercharging stations they're making. Hopefully, they get into contracts, they get into agreements with all these other electric vehicle car companies. So if you got a Lucid Motors and you're looking for a Lucid Motors uh, charging station and you see a Tesla one, you're like, damn, they don't offer the adapters to charge my vehicle. Again, we have to look at the infrastructure. That's why I believe Tesla, if you had to choose one, that's why I believe Tesla is worth more than all the rest. Good morning, Prime X. This is Financial Literacy 101. Learn money and be inspired. You guys have a great and wonderful day. And I know you guys are getting ready for Thanksgiving. Mm -mm. I'm out.